of any president we've ever had if you look at the characteristics of the devil. A new book has quoted U.S. President Barack Obama as saying that he's proud of killing people. Obama has reportedly bragged that he was, quote, really good at killing people. The book says the American president, who's also a Nobel Peace Prize winner, made the remarks while discussing... You're absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith. We are no longer a Christian nation. We do not consider ourselves a Christian nation. Or the United States has been enriched by Muslim Americans. Since our founding, American Muslims have enriched the United States. Islam has always been a part of America's story. Let me speak as clearly and as plainly as I can. America is not and never will be at war with Islam. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you, say. Thank you, say. Thank you, say. Let me. Let me express. Let me express my thanks to the historic slate of candidates who accompanied me on this journey. Let me express. Let me express self scandal. Self scandal. Self scandal. Self scandal. Self scandal. President Barack Obama released his latest executive order, a 2200 plus word document offered as the assignment of national security and emergency preparedness communications functions. Although not widely publicized, these powers provide the president with complete control of all communication systems in America. What does the president know that we don't? Uh, three senators who heard about this, uh, one of them was a kind of a liberal who said, boy, that sounds too much like the book of Revelation. But a lot of people don't know that there is the availability now that starting, uh, it could start in 2014, but by 2017, is to have everybody do away with all everybody's health care, put you on yeah. government health care, and put a chip. It's called oh, a health care yeah. chip yeah. with all your information in your right hand because all the scanners will be right-handed scanners. And so uh, people need to wake up. See, we're not, we're sleeping. We're sleeping. And uh, I'm, I don't know that America has to go that way. I 2009 in the month of May, and the gentleman said, I've got to tell you this period that's just happened to me. This freaked me out. I just flew on a plane with a man who is in a, a, on the board of the American Medical Association. Do you know what he told me? He said, we got in a conversation. The man's not a Christian. He said that the Obama administration was going to force health care in because they have a chip that's going to be put in the right hand or the forehead of everybody taking the health care system. Uh, when the World Wide Web came into existence, World Wide Web was abbreviated by three English letters, www.com. Now, it was noted, and I noted this immediately, that in the Hebrew language, the W is a Vav, because a Vav uh, can be a V or a W in the Hebrew language. Oddly enough, the Vav is, a, is a, the numerical value in gematria in Hebrew of the letter Vav is 6. So, if you have World Wide Web, go ahead, guys, you translate it to the Hebrew language, guess what it is? It's simply 666, because the letter Vav is a letter 6 in number value of the Hebrew alphabet. With the fact that the president has spent more, has raised the national debt more than any other president combined, combined in U.S. history. It says when Mr. Obama became president in January 2009, the total federal debt stood at 10.6 trillion. This week it hit 16.7 trillion, an increase of 57%. That's more than any other president in U.S. history combined. As the national debt, which stands just shy of $17 trillion, isn't even close to what the government and you, the taxpayer, really owe. So the gentleman who came up with this is James Hamilton. He's an economics professor at the University of California, San Diego. And he claims that the true national debt is actually more like $70 trillion. Come this way. Come this way. I'm sure you're I'm not supposed to, but sorry, we're breaking protocol here. I didn't see that. 
That's all right. That's the thing about being president. I can, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> president, I can, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I have two words for you. Predator drones. Predator drones. You will never see it coming. You know, the last thing I ever, ever expected to come out of a Nobel Peace Prize winner's mouth is this. I'm really good at killing people. Yes, folks, according to a new book, Double Down, our beloved president, constitutional lawyer, and Nobel laureate Barack Obama, apparently loves to brag about how well he can execute human beings with drones. Well, we're expecting to see our government's justification for droning American terror suspects overseas, American citizens. In other words, the government killing U.S. citizens with no jury, no trial, no lawyers, no process, no nothing, just droning them to death. Well, an, an executive order signed by President Obama has sparked controversy on both sides of the political aisle. The National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order was signed quietly Friday night. It gives the president the power to control U.S. resources in times of war and peace. And peace. But right now, is the Obama administration breaking the law? Hey, why do you say the president is breaking the law? Uh, the president is supposed to enforce the laws, not forbid the enforcement of laws. And what we're seeing time after time after time over the past few months, the president has found the Obamacare law has put him and his political future in a corner. And to extricate himself from that, he just goes about trying to change the law. Change the law. And repeatedly now over the past few months, the president has forbid the enforcement of the law or change the law to suit his own ends, and he does so unconstitutionally. My critics call this the imperial presidency. Truth is, I just show up every day in my office and do my job. I've got a picture of this, I think. <laughs> you would think They'd appreciate a more assertive approach, considering that the new conservative darling is none other than Vladimir Putin. I have two words for you, predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. But Kissinger says they are preparing Obama to create this new world order. Now, I have a lot of stock in what Kissinger says because he's a member of this secret society, the Bilderbergs, which just met in Virginia and laid out plans to microchip all humans by 2017. That's how near we are to the coming of the Lord. That's Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18, and chapters 14, uh, verses 9 and 11, 15 to 16 to 19, verse 20 and 20, verse 4, but let's go on. Secondly, he brings in a peace program, and here is Blair and Brown, the Prime Minister of England, saying we want Obama to go and have a part in the peace process. 
And you see, he comes in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21, enters in peaceably, Daniel 11, 24, and lo and behold, he makes a contract for seven years, but it only lasts for 42 months, and then Rush, as I said earlier, breaks it, Ezekiel 38, verse 11. But he's more than that. He's going to rule during the tribulation hour. 21 judgments in Revelation chapter 6 to 18. And that includes Armageddon of Revelation 16, 16, the greatest battle in the history of the world. I wouldn't want to be president or I wouldn't want to have a part as a leader of the New World Order under the circumstances, believe me. Fourthly, the Bible says in Daniel 7, verse 20, that he is going to be a stout person. liar who can tell lies on top of lies twisted within other lies with added spin and deception so so, so yes it resonates that obama is a devil we will keep this promise to the american people if you like your doctor you will be able to keep your doctor period period if you like your health care plan you'll be able to keep your health care plan period if you like your doctor or health care plan, you can keep it. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your private health insurance plan, you can keep your plan. Period. Period. Nothing in this plan will require you or your employer to change the coverage of the doctor you have. Breaking tonight, just about an hour ago, Fox News confirmed that the administration knew, it knew as early as 2010, that millions of Americans would lose their health care plans, even as the president explicitly promised the opposite. Four months later, an administrative me memo talking about how over 70% of the individual insurance market was going to get canceled, and the president in 2012, Mark, came out and reiterated what he said, that if you like your plan, you're going to get to keep it. So I ask you what I asked Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel on Friday. Was he intentionally misleading, or was there some argument that he was grossly mistaken? Now let's make two things clear. ISIL is not Islamic. ISIL is not Islamic. Right. And you can keep your doctor and your health care plan. Al Qaeda's on the run. And ISIS is not Islamic. Tell us the truth for once. You mentioned your Christian faith. Um, yesterday you took off after the Republicans for suggesting you have Muslim connections. Just a, a few minutes ago, Rick Davis. Uh, John McCain's campaign manager said they've never done that. This is a false and cynical attempt to play victim. You, you know what? I, I mean, these guys love to throw a rock and, and, and hide, hide uh, their hand. Uh, it, it, let's not play games. Uh, what I was suggesting, you, you're absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith, and you're absolutely right that that has not Christian come faith. at my, my Christian faith. As some of you heard, uh, the state of Hawaii released my official long-form birth certificate. Dr. Jerome Corsi with WND.com is reporting that Chicago's homosexual community claims that Barack Obama's participation in the gay bar and bathhouse scene in Chicago was so well known that many who were aware of his lifestyle were shocked when he ran for president. Our journey is not complete until our gay brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. For if we are truly created equal, then surely the love we commit to one another must be equal as well. To tell you, as I said, I've, I've been going through an evolution on this issue. Um, I've always been adamant that uh, gay and lesbian uh, Americans should be treated fairly and equally. For me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same sex couples should be able to get married. Our nation was founded on a bedrock principle that we are all created equal. The project of each generation is to bridge the meaning of those founding words with the realities of changing times. Changing times. This morning, the Supreme Court recognized that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. In doing so, they've reaffirmed that all Americans are entitled to the equal protection of the law. 
I did ingest a couple of lines of cocaine, and shortly thereafter, Senator Obama produced a glass cylinder pipe and packet of crack cocaine from his pocket. Obama then smoked the crack cocaine. I performed fellatio on Senator Obama in the limousine during the time Senator Obama was smoking crack cocaine, after which I had the driver take me to my hotel, the Comfort Suites, Gurney, Illinois. It was, in fact, an attempt by Mr. Young to obtain from me the identities of anyone I contacted concerning my 1999 allegations against Senator Obama. The first call shocked me in that this Mr. Young asked me why I had not asked Senator Obama to disclose the sexual encounters I had with Mr. Obama in 1999. Mr. Rivers, how are you? You made, you made a ton of news right. officiating the wedding in New York yesterday. Is this like a, is this like a new uh, cottage uh, career move I for you? I am so excited. Yeah. And I should do very well because I don't show And do you think that the country will see the first, the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman well, we president? We already have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle is a trans. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. It's okay. It. Most of all, Admiral Mullen, Deborah, Michael and I also want to acknowledge uh, your son Jack who's deployed today. Michael and I also want to acknowledge uh, your son Jack who's deployed today. All of you have performed extraordinary service to our country. The question is, who is Michelle Obama. Is she really a woman? Is she a man? Tell me I did not just see that. He was the savior, black Jesus, I mean. We're gonna spread happiness. We're gonna spread freedom. Mama, say, say, Mama. Sit down, Mama, Mama. Obama's gonna change it. Obama's gonna leave. Give an honor to God and our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. And our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. I know the first beast is whom we say he is, the beast in the White House, because the Lord gave me another revelation where I saw him, that he, he, got, he was shot, he was shot, he was badly wounded, Hello, and he wasn't there. I seen his wife, first lady, she was there, Secret Service and all that. Hello, and there was a turmoil here in America, but that was all in the tribulation. And, and, and everyone, when, when he got healed, was like worshiping in New York City and everywhere. Hallelujah. And it's going to be terrible, my brothers and sisters, terrible. What is coming to this country and the world, hallelujah, because... What they're going to face is the tribulation very soon. Now, let's take a look at those pictures from Obama's presidential address earlier this week. Tell me what you see. Uh, this was not photoshopped, by the way. These images have appeared on Fox News, Slate, Business Insider, and the National Review, and they are now going viral. 
And it is a chilling photo of what appears to be devil horns on Obama's head during his last presidential address. So it, to me, it, it definitely looks like a demonic apparition. Anyone who thinks Obama is the Antichrist would, would certainly have their beliefs reinforced by looking at these pictures. He's got horns coming out of the side and on top of his head. It almost looks deliberate, but hell, I don't know, maybe it's a, a PSYOP. Well, I tell you what, he definitely acts like the Antichrist, and now he looks like him too. Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Well, I just go ahead and worship him. And I think this was the idea <laughs> behind a new sculpture of Obama as Jesus. Conservative columnist David Brooks compares Obama to a messiah. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. They have depicted Barack Obama in so many ways as being the messiah. Everyone from Jamie Foxx, Chris Rock, to other people, News, Newsweek coming out saying he's the god of all things. And he will be mocking what Jesus Christ did. As in 33 AD, Jesus entered Israel six days before Passover. Six days before Passover. Riding metaphorically on the back of the donkey. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay, and that eating uh, shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own defense department would survive its application. This morning, the Supreme Court recognized that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. In doing so, they've reaffirmed that all Americans are entitled to the equal protection of the law, that all people should be treated equally, regardless of who they are or who they love. When that slow, steady effort is rewarded with justice that arrives like a thunderbolt like a thunderbolt that is a thunderbolt hitting the top of the washington monument in washington dc just three days before the supreme court rulings on obamacare and same-sex marriage amazing grace how sweet the sound. Hello, everybody. This is not Frank Underwood. This is Barack Obama. Happy April Fool's Day. Frank learned it from me. Frank learned it from me. You think I'm joking? So I was standing behind a man in a suit, and his back was to me, and he was on the ground on all fours, and he was walking like an animal, like a dog. At that time, I could hear the Lord introduce him as one having the spirit of Antichrist. And the man that was on the ground walking like a beast, like an animal, it was uh, Barack Obama. I received these visions. I saw a person's head and his eyes were glowing red. His mouth was red, everything was glowing an evil red color. The Holy Spirit told me as I was having this vision that it was Obama. Then I saw the top of Obama's head open up like it was hinged at the crown of his head, and I saw Satan get into his head. 
the Holy Spirit told me that Satan has entered the Antichrist. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prophesy for you. The Lord has poured this prophecy into me. And after I prophesy, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you what those words mean. And it's just fascinating. So let me just take a moment and pray, Lord. I pray that you'll just speak those words through me again so that these people can hear it and understand. And I'm praying that you give everybody that watches this video the eyes to see and the heart to understand and the ears to hear. So thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, the hand of the oppressor has been lifted against you. And out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem shall cover the city by the sea. And great shall be the destruction of that city. And behold, the great wall which holds back the abundance of the rivers shall burst forth, bringing the hand of the oppressor against you, for I have seen it. For mighty is your enemy that is risen from within your own borders. Now behold the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place where it should not be. Here is the mystery made known to you. You are the holy place of which I speak. And the abomination of desolation shall rise from within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple. For have you not seen and have you not heard and has it not been made known to you? Have you not read the scriptures? For when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they did bear children to them. And the same became mighty men. And has not the sea turned mighty? And the sea shall turn terrible before your very eyes. And the terrible one shall be elevated within the sea. And behold, the man of peace shall come forth from the sea, Barack Hussein Obama. And with words of peace, he will bring chaos and destruction. I want to thank. Christian th God is the one and only true living God, the Creator of heaven and the universe. <laughs> Obama is as wicked as the day is long, but he is only a pathetic puppet. He is only a pathetic agent of the great evil that is to manifest on this planet. He is only a precursor. Yes, Obama is the Antichrist. He is a Antichrist. He is the spirit of the world. He is the spirit of Beelzebub, Bathomet, Leviathan, the devil. He is the devil. Barack Obama is the devil.